Just go along with me here as I rationalize some reasons that lambda expressions can be useful. So just go with me here for a moment. Imagine you wanted to pass some condition as a parameter. So a caller could specify a subset of files. As it is now in our examples, we're getting all of the files in a folder in the output list. What if you wanted to say, I only want files where the size is greater than 10,000 bytes? Well, you could hard code that condition in the procedure. And every time you wanted a different condition, you create a different procedure. It might be better to pass that condition as a parameter. So you pass basically a WHERE clause as a parameter to your procedure. Like I said, maybe you want to specify that you'll only seek files within a specified size range. Maybe you only want files that begin with A. Maybe you only want executable files that are greater than 50,000 bytes. And without some help, there's no way to generalize this. We have no way built into simple language features to specify a condition on an if statement within code as a parameter without doing something special. Now you could use delegates. A delegate is a type that represents a particular kind of procedure. It defines the parameters and the return type on a procedure. You could pass an instance of a particular delegate type as a parameter to your file searching procedure. And the procedure could then call the delegate instance to filter the return values. In our case, the delegate instance should accept a file info as a parameter so it can look at each file and determine whether or not to include that file. Therefore, it should also return a Boolean value. It takes in a file info, decides whether or not to accept that file info, and returns true or false back. We could call that delegate instance for each file we find in the collection of files when we call the getFiles method. Well, let's set this up and try some examples that demonstrate this behavior, which has nothing to do with new features. This is all old features. Let's give it a try. If I choose option H, this will let us hard code a condition. You can see here, I want only the files whose length is greater than 10,000 bytes to be in my collection. So I have a condition, it's hard coded, and it works. I only get files greater than 10,000 bytes in the collection, but it means if I want a different condition, I have to provide a different version of this procedure. Here I got a shorter list, you can't tell, but it is shorter, and none of the files are less than 10,000 bytes. Great. But let's try it now using a delegate instead to define that condition. Well, I have here a private delegate function file filter delegate, which takes as a parameter, like I mentioned, a file info object, and it returns back a Boolean. So whatever function this is that we specify, we'll have to take in a file info object and return a Boolean back. We're going to pass an instance of that type. Here we have new file filter delegate. There's the type. And we supply to the constructor of that instance the address of a procedure to call. Large files looks like this. It says, I'll return true if fi.length is greater than 10,000 bytes. It's a procedure that accepts a file info and returns a Boolean value back. That means we can pass it to the constructor of that new instance of the file filter delegate, and the code will compile. The same for small files. It takes in a file info, returns a Boolean, and returns true if the length is greater than 100. So here now, We'll call search for files, passing in the search path and our file filter delegate instance. Here you can see condition is that file filter delegate instance. Condition is just a method, and we can call that method. So everything's the same until we get to our condition. Rather than hard coding if fi.length is greater than 10,000, we say if condition passing fi is a parameter. Condition is a reference to, a pointer to, a procedure. And if I single step in, we'll go into that procedure. Even though our code said call the condition, the condition was defined to be large files, this procedure. It returns true. The next time through, it returns true. So we do add the file to our collection. And in this way, we've set up a dynamic filter 
you could specify the address of any procedure that met the criteria of being a file filter delegate object. That is, a procedure that's a function, that takes in a file info, that returns a Boolean back. So we've created a delegate and an instance of the delegate to filter our list of files using that delegate instance as the condition. Now, just as a side note, you're welcome to create your own delegate type as we did in that previous example. The file filter delegate type accepted a file info as a parameter and returned back a Boolean. But it's usually better to use a built-in delegate type if there is one that meets your needs. This is easier for consumers of your code to understand because these are well-known delegate types. They're documented in the .NET framework and anyone can use them. In our case, the predicate delegate type fits our filtering need. The predicate type is a built-in delegate that accepts any kind of object. It is a generic delegate type and it returns a Boolean value back. Its point in life is to do exactly what our file filter delegate did. The predicate delegate type describes a procedure which accepts a parameter of a specific type and returns a Boolean back. Let's look at our example, which is modified to use an instance of the predicate delegate type as opposed to our own file filter delegate type. I'll press option J to go here. And now you'll see that we're using a different procedure, search for file 6A. This one takes in a path and the address of a procedure. I'm not even in this case creating a new file filter delegate or any specific delegate. I'm just passing in the address of a procedure. How does that work? Well, it would have worked in the last procedure we did as well. But let's look at search for files 6A. Here we go. Search for files 6A takes as its parameters a path and a condition as predicate of file info. Predicate is defined as a delegate which takes in a generic type and returns back a Boolean. You have to specify the generic type when you declare the instance here, predicate of file info. Since condition that was passed to us was large files does meet that criteria. It is a function, it returns a Boolean, it accepts a file info as a parameter. And now the code works exactly the same as the last one. Here we will loop through all the files and add the ones where the length is greater than 10,000 because we passed in the address of large files. I'll put a breakpoint here. We'll run full speed to there. Run that and get out. And now let's do the same thing for small files. Here, I'm going to pass in the address of small files and that will look for all the files that are less than 100 bytes. So, let's try it again. And this time you'll see we have two lists of files, the large files and the small files. And we did that by passing two different predicate procedures. Large files is a predicate and small files is a predicate. And a predicate, I'm using that word here as defined by the .NET framework, is a procedure that accepts any particular type and you specify the type when you pass it and returns a Boolean back and that predicate procedure's goal in life is to return true or false to whether you want to include the object in the output of some search or some condition or something. So we've used the predicate type here as opposed to the file filter delegate only because it makes this code more standardized and more comfortable for end users to call. Now there is another feature that applies in this area, but it doesn't exist for Visual Basic developers. That is the concept of anonymous delegates. Anonymous delegates allow you to, rather than having to create a procedure like large files or small files, you can just create the delegate instance right in the procedure where you call search for files or whatever the procedure is. So rather than passing the address of a procedure, you pass a block defined in curly braces that defines the body of that delegate instance. Now since Visual Basic doesn't provide this feature, if you choose option K, it just doesn't do anything. 
I put that there because you'll hear developers talk about anonymous delegates and anonymous methods provided by C Sharp. And actually, this would get us closer to the concept of Lambda expressions, which is where we're going, but VB doesn't support them. So if you're interested, you can look up anonymous delegates in C Sharp to see what the syntax looks like. For now, we'll just move on to discussing Lambda expressions, which gives us much of the same functionality in VB and in C Sharp. Many of the link query methods are actually functions that require parameters. And in order to specify parameters to those methods, Lambda expressions were defined. These work both in Visual Basic and C Sharp. Now, if in previous versions of Visual Basic, if they'd supported anonymous methods, we wouldn't really need Lambda expressions in this version because Lambda expressions are really just simplified anonymous methods. But because Visual Basic doesn't support anonymous methods, we needed some way to indicate a function that defines the behavior of some other function, and that became a Lambda expression. It's really just a delegate instance required by the method you're calling. These act like anonymous methods. They're slightly more limited, as you'll see, but they work in both Visual Basic and C Sharp. Let's look at an example of a Lambda expression that will modify the behavior of a procedure but isn't a delegate instance. It uses a different syntax and keeps things pretty simple. To examine Lambda expressions, I'll choose option L. Here, you'll see that we're specifying within the parameter to search for file 6a a function not the address of a function, but the actual function itself. It's a weird syntax. The keyword function must appear, then a parameter. You can specify a type or not. If you don't, it will infer the type from the data structure you're using, and then we'll specify the condition. fi.length is greater than 100, and fi.length is less than 10,000. That's the condition we're passing as we define it here within this code. Now, we could have created a separate procedure, like large files and small files, for this condition. But since it's a one-off thing, I don't want to create a procedure for it. Instead, I'll just pass this lambda expression, which defines the condition I want as a parameter to search for file 6a. Well, in search for file 6a, we're expecting a predicate instance. Now, what is predicate? You'll remember it is a function that takes in one of whatever this says, and returns a Boolean back. Well, certainly that condition we specified did just that. And so now, if we run this full speed, we end up with, I don't need that breakpoint anymore, we end up with a list of all the files that are greater than 100 bytes and less than 10,000 bytes. So we were able to, at the time we called search for files 6a, define the exact expression we wanted to use as the condition, and that's a Lambda expression. Now, if you look at the Lambda expression carefully, you'll see that it has to have the function keyword, any parameters in parentheses, and you can define the types of those if you want, and then the body of the function here. In the current version of Visual Basic, that function has to return a value. It can't be a single statement. It must be a value. And it can't be more than one statement. It has to be a single statement that returns a value of the correct type of the function you're calling that's expecting that delegate instance. Now, we can use the same technique to do other things. Let me try sorting. In this example, we're going to call, using the same parameters, a different procedure, search for files 6b. This one. does everything exactly the same as the previous one until we get to the display results procedure. Down here, we're going to not only display the results, we're going to order the files. Well, by what? How do you specify how to order these things? Well, order by appears to be a method of the list class. And if you've ever studied the list class, you know it doesn't have an order by method. It might have a sort method. But the list class does not have an order by method. Where does that come from then? Well, order by here is an extension method. 
It's provided by the system.link.enumerable class, which provides methods that extend other classes. It has a method named orderBy that extends the list class. And the orderBy method requires as its parameter a function, a lambda expression, that defines the criteria on which you'll be sorting. Let's stop debugging for a moment, and let's look at this code. Well, certainly there is an order by method, and you can see the extension keyword, which indicates that this is an extension provided by some other class. Now, order by here expects as its parameter a func, system.func. Not quite sure what that is, but if I specify here function, actually, I do know what it is. We'll get to it in a minute. And pass in the my file info object, I want to return true if my file info. I want to return the value on which I want to sort, which is mfi.length. So here we've specified a lambda expression here, which provides a parameter for the order by method. And if I run this and choose n, you see we do get the items ordered by length. It looks to be length descending. Let's make sure I ran the right example. I should have chosen M. Let's see if M. Here we go. We're only looking at the files between 100 and 10,000 bytes. We come here, we're saying order by length, and we should get these in ascending order. Yep, I pressed the wrong key before. Our next example sorts them in descending order. Phew, that was going to be scary if things showed up in descending order, and yet we said to order by the length of the file. Well, we need to look at what that func thing is, because order by was expecting a parameter that is a func. Well, what is a func? Clearly, it must be some kind of delegate. Before we discuss that func thing, we need to talk about lambda expressions and delegates. You can pass a lambda expression to a procedure that's expecting a delegate. As you saw, it certainly worked. And to use a lambda in place of a delegate, the lambda expression must have the same number of parameters as the delegate. Well, in our case, we were passing a lambda expression with one parameter in the place of a delegate that was expecting one parameter. That was our predicate delegate. Each lambda parameter must be able to be converted implicitly to the type of the corresponding delegate parameter. In our case, the delegate was expecting a file info, and our lambda passed a file info. No problem. The lambda return type must be able to be converted implicitly to the delegate's return type. Well, the delegate returned a Boolean, and our lambda returned a Boolean, so there wasn't any problem there. Now, in our example, we supplied sorting criteria. But we didn't supply it as a parameter. We just supplied it built into the method call to that order by method. Now, we could call the order by method in code. That's what we did and pass a lambda expression specifying the sort behavior. We'll learn more about extension methods in just a minute. But the order by method is supplied by the link.enumerable class as an extension to the list and other classes. We've already seen that. Extension methods are created in one class, and they extend another. So although the method order by is defined in the link.enumerable class, it extends the list class and other classes as well. But you might want to pass that delegate, the sort order, as a parameter. And if you look at the order by method, it expects a func as a parameter. You need to supply a function that determines the sorting order. Well, func is just a delegate type that does the job. Now, it is a generic delegate, so it has a parameter named t that refers to the incoming parameter type. And in the func definition, t result refers to the returned type. So we're going to look at, again, the example we just saw and examine that func declaration, and then look at an example where we pass an instance of the func delegate type as a lambda expression from the calling procedure. Let me get out of run mode here and go back to our procedure and review what this order by thing is expecting. If we look at order by here, it's expecting a func of my file info, and a T key is the key that we're sorting by. So here, the key selector 
is the name of this thing. It is a func, and it needs to be a lambda expression, which takes in some parameter, and then returns back some information about that parameter. In our case, it's the length. That is a func. We now have a version here, search for file 6c, which takes in a condition for filtering and a func for sorting. Long here indicates the type we'll use as the sorting criteria. And down here, when we call display results, we'll just call order by passing in that sorting variable, which is a func of my file info, comma, long. My file info is the type coming in, long is the type going out. That's how func is defined. So down here, we just pass sorting, and that's it. Well, how do we call this thing? Let's see. I'm looking at option N, lambda parameters for sorting. In this example, I'm going to pass in for the filter, again, files greater than 100 and less than 10,000. But for the sorting, I'm passing a func, which takes in a my file info instance and sorts based on the negative of the length. What is sorting based on the negative of the length do? Well, that sorts in reverse order. It uses the opposite of the length, negative of the length, as the order in which it should sort these items. If you're sorting them from lowest to highest, and you're sorting by the negative of the length, the largest file will go first, and the smallest file will go last. And here, we'll step into the procedure. Everything's the same till we get down to our display results method call. And here, sorting is a func we're using to define how to do the sorting. And you'll see that we sort in descending order. Now, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change this procedure at all. I'm going to change the procedure that calls it. Here, so we can find that thing. It's up here somewhere. Here it is. I'm going to change this so it doesn't sort on the length, but instead sorts on the name. And now if we run this procedure, oops, it doesn't work. You know why it doesn't work? Because our procedure is expecting a func which returns a long back, not the name. So let's look at name.length. That'll be more fun. We'll sort on the length of the name. Just to prove that we can, we'd have to modify our procedure if we wanted to use a different func in specifying the sorting. Let's run this again. And now if I use option N, you'll see it sorts on the length of the name from shortest files to longest files in order as we display the results. We didn't change the procedure that displayed the results. We just changed the lambda expression we passed to the procedure in order to perform that sorting. What if you want to calculate the total size of files in your list? You could create a method, a standalone method, that accepts a list as a parameter. It would then iterate through everything in the list and calculate the size. To use the method, you would have to know that it exists or use IntelliSense based on some class that contains it. But it certainly wouldn't show up as some method of the list itself. And that would be nice. Wouldn't it be easier if it was a method of the list class? Seems to me it would be. What we need to do is create an extension method that extends the list class that provides the sum of all the files in that list. So we're going to extend the list of my file info class only so it can calculate the size of the files in that list. Now you may not yet have created an extension method. These add new methods to existing classes without modifying those existing classes. And although they were created for link to make link work, they're not just for link but they are crucial for link. Extension methods have certain rules that must be followed. They must be declared as a public method. They have to accept a parameter, the type of which defines the class that you're extending. In our case, we'll be extending the list of my file info type, so we'll have to accept a parameter of that type. Your extension method must exist within a module, 
and it must include the extension attribute so that the compiler knows that the method is an extension to some other class. Let's look at an example which extends the list of my file info type to calculate the total size of all the files in the list. Now as I mentioned earlier, you don't actually have to create an extension method. You could just create a shared method of a class that uh, provides the sum of the files in a list, but you have to pass the list to it as a parameter. Let's look at the example that does that. Option O here. And you can see I have a search for file 7 and it, oh, what's the condition? Oh, this is tricky. I have a condition that says just true. And that means our filter will return true for every file and will include every file. And I have a lambda expression for the sorting and that says to sort backwards based on the length of the file. Let's step into this. Here we go. And you can see it's pretty much the same here as what you've seen already. But now we want to calculate the total size as well. So everything's the same down to this procedure. Here we are. Okay, now how do we get the total size? Well, I have over in my extension methods class a get total size method. You pass in a list of my file info and it does the ugly thing where it sums up the length of the files in that collection. Okay, we could do it that way. But if we go back to our code, it's going to do this for each file. That's not going to be very interesting. Let's go back over here, put a breakpoint here, say, and run full speed. We can see that we've calculated the total size, and we'll see it in just a moment, actually. There it is. But the fact is that we had to know that get total size was a member of this extension methods class. I might not know where to look for this thing. If I didn't know, I wouldn't know it existed or how to call it or where it was. So although this technique works, it's not a very good technique. It's probably one you've used in the past to create a generalized helper procedure. Now wouldn't it be better if get total size or something like it appeared as a method of the list class itself. Well, it's pretty easy to make that happen. If we go back to our code, let's go to extension methods. Here we have a total size method, which is defined as taking a parameter, which is a list of my file info. Remember, the first parameter to this method defines the class it's extending. It returns a long back. It's an extension method. It has this extension attribute. And by the way, to use that extension attribute, you'll want to import the system.runtime.compilerservices namespace. If you don't, you have to type that full name down here, and that's a pain. Okay, now that we have that extension attribute, the compiler knows that this method extends the list of my file info class. So let's get out of debugging mode here and look at the code. Go over back to our procedure here and look at the search for files 7a procedure here. Notice here we called files dot total size. Total size becomes a method of the list of my file info class. You can see even the keyword extension appears in the IntelliSense there. Oops, there we go. Extension appears in that keyword indicating that this is an extension method and it has a little blue down arrow indicating it's an extension method. In any case, we'll put the code back the way it was and you'll see how much easier it is to find this total size method. It is an extension method of the list of my file info type and it applies only to that type. Anywhere in this project, I could use that method to calculate the total size of a list of my file info objects. If I run this code and go to extension method P, here we go. Oh, by the way, if you look at that code I just called, I didn't do it right. So let me just run it full speed again and we'll come back and try it again. That was P. Here we are you'll see that we're passing as our condition lambda expression just the value true, which means include all the files in the output. For our sort 
lambda expression, we're specifying the negative of the file length, which should give us the files in reverse order. It doesn't affect anything else we're doing, but I wanted to make sure you saw those. Before we run the procedure, and you'll see we do get the total size and it works fine, but it did it using an extension method of the list of my file info type. Now you can chain operations using extension methods as well. Imagine you need to take the results of the search and sum the sizes of the five largest files. Lots of ways you could do this. You could sort the list by file length in descending order. Then take the top five, that is the largest files, and then sum the resulting file sizes. Or we could use the enumerable.orderByDescending method the enumerable.take method to take five files, and the enumerable.sum method to sum the five files we just took. So there are a number of ways we could solve this problem, but chaining extension methods makes your code a lot cleaner. Let's look at the two examples that try this the hard way and the easy way. To demonstrate calling these query methods, let me try option Q, which will take us down into, oops, I always do that. Just want to close this window. There we go. And you'll see here we're calling search for files 8, passing in this time a different criteria, files less than 50,000, just to keep your interest up. And here, a function which tells me to sort by the opposite of the length. Okay, well, let's go into search for files 8, and everything here is all the same until we get to this last line of code. We'll display the list, we'll display the total size, and now I'd like to calculate the size.